In this tutorial, we will be looking at assemblies. Open SolidWorks and choose New File. Select Assemblies as your file type and either double click or click on OK. Either using the pop up window or the browse button, navigate to where you saved your building blocks. Select the block you want to use and click Open. The block will be stuck to your cursor until you click to put it in place. The first block you add is always fixed in place. This makes it easier to build on. If you need to change this, then you can right click and choose float. But for now, leave it fixed. We need to add another block in now. On the assembly ribbon, choose insert component. And just like before, navigate to your blocks and choose the one you want to use. And just like before, it will appear stuck to your cursor. Move it out of the way of the first block before clicking to place it. You can zoom in or out by using the wheel on your mouse. As this is a second block, you can easily move it around. To change the view, you can either use the arrow keys on your keyboard, but as you can see, this isn't very precise. It's much better to tap the spacebar, which brings up the orientation box, and from here, you can easily change to one of the preset views. If the block you've added isn't the right way around, you can rotate it. Click the arrow under the move component and choose rotate. You can then freely drag your block around. We are now going to join the blocks together using the mate function. This allows us to create a series of rules, a bit like invisible glue. To start, click on mate on the assembly ribbon. We are now going to select the surfaces or edges we want to apply a rule to. These will then appear in the blue box on the feature manager. You can see we have a variety of options. Coincident means we want the two surfaces to coincide with each other, which makes the planes parallel. It's always a good idea to experiment with the different mates available to see which one lines up the surfaces the way you want. But remember, it's often difficult to see what effect a mate has had until you look at a different view. In this view, it looks like I can still freely move the block around. But, if I turn it on its side, you can see that actually, the mate I've applied keeps the surfaces lined up. Now we can apply another mate rule to further constrain the block. This time, I'm going to choose the edges of the block pins. I need to use the arrow keys on my keyboard to move around the blocks so I can choose the edges I want. But because these edges are circular, I have some new mate rules available. For example, concentric will line the circles up with each other. But when I change the view, I can see that this mate rule hasn't worked. I've chosen the wrong edges to mate, and so I need to try again. In the feature manager tree, you can see the two blocks I'm working on, and a section called mates. By clicking on the plus sign, I can expand this section choose the mate rule I want to remove and delete it. And now I can try again. This time I need to think about which surface edges I'm choosing by selecting the bottom of one block pin and the bottom edge of the corresponding hole and choosing concentric as the rule, the blocks are now lined up. But I still need to apply another rule to ensure that they are securely fastened together. The final mate rule that we need is a coincident mate between the top and bottom surfaces. And now the block should be securely fastened together. I'm going to add in one last block to show you another way of applying a mate rule. Sometimes, when you apply a mate rule, your block can end up inside another block. If this happens, just drag it out of the way with your mouse. You might need to change the view in order to do this. Now, you don't have to click mate before selecting surfaces. This time, I'm going to click on a surface I want to apply a mate rule to, hold down the shift key on my keyboard, 
and select the second service. Then I can click Mate on the assembly ribbon. And with these final mate rules in place, you can see that the blocks are securely fixed together. All I need to do now is save this assembly in a logical place like my H drive with a logical name like block assembly. Using the blocks that you made last lesson and the pre-built blocks available on the internet, see how complicated your own construction can be before the end of the lesson.